Virtual reality is a computer-generated world that allows the user to experience a reality that is, quite frankly, impossible on Earth. From fantasy lands to gaming servers, there's nothing you can't do with virtual reality. But how did it start exactly? You may think that it's a fairly new concept, something that hasn't been thought of until the new millennium. What if we told you that virtual reality has existed since the 19th century? Don't believe us? Then check this out. Painters used to create panoramic images that would give the viewer the sensation that they were completely engulfed in this new world. Charles Wheatstone took note of this phenomenon in 1838 when he realized that images viewed through a stereoscope could create a three-dimensional sensation. And thus, the earliest prototype of virtual reality was born. However, we wouldn't see VR like we know it today up until the 1960s. Ivan Sutherland created the world's first VR set that was mounted onto the user's head, much like the gaming systems you're familiar with. That same decade, Morton Heilig would go on to create the Sensorama, a virtual reality experience that would allow the viewer to ride their bicycle through the streets of Brooklyn. Well, not literally, seeing as it was all computer-generated. This console not only had panoramic images, a vibrating seat and stereo sound, but odor emitters as well. That's right, you could literally smell the streets of New York City while wearing this device. Could you imagine if modern-day virtual reality consoles had this feature? Would you like it? Let us know in the comments section below. Virtual reality would go on to develop more and more and during the next few decades, with Sega creating their very own VR gaming headset that never hit the market. It seemed as though the virtual reality hype was beginning to die down until it was revitalized by a certain movie. Can you guess which one? If you guessed The Matrix, then you'd be correct. For those unfamiliar with the film, The Matrix, directed by the Vahosky siblings, takes place completely in a virtual world. The film was a box office hit, and the want for more virtual reality-related content increased tenfold. As we entered the 21st century and computer graphics began to develop at a rapid pace, high-tech virtual reality was becoming more and more possible to achieve. There was already a pattern of wanting to escape our boring day-to-day -day lives happening, with games like Second Life, The Sims, IMVU, and others becoming more and more popular. These games allowed players to separate themselves from the real world and embody a new character or avatar that could be anything they wanted. This want for escapism combined with massive technological advancements set the stage for the virtual reality we all know and love in 2022. This want for a new life would be taken to the next level in 2014, when Meta, at the time known as Facebook, would buy the Oculus VR and create VR chat rooms. These chat rooms allowed users to connect with people all over the world in a virtual space and have face-to-face -face conversations with them, which wouldn't be possible without the usage of virtual reality. In fact, Meta has continued this trend and has been improving upon to this very day. When the COVID-19 pandemic struck the globe and turned workplaces on their heads, Meta devised a plan to create a virtual workspace that would allow employees to engage with each other in a shared space. That was all completely virtual. As you can see, virtual reality has clearly come a long way since its humble beginnings as panoramic paintings in the 19th century. Now, virtual reality is often tied to gaming, and for good reason. Virtual reality games are incredibly popular, and you'd be surprised at how many people play them on a daily basis. But virtual reality isn't just for entertainment purposes. It has a slew of benefits for a variety of different medical issues, both physiological and mental. For example, when patients are experiencing high pain levels, doctors have used virtual reality in the path to distract their brain and interrupt pain pathways. It can even treat some serious mental disorders like PTSD, or also known as post-traumatic stress disorder. But unlike the pain management solution, the patients aren't the ones who utilize virtual reality. No, it's the doctors. How? Well, by using virtual reality, doctors are able to put themselves in the literal shoes of their patients to understand what they experienced on a more personal level. Therefore, being able to better assess their mental state and how these traumatic experiences are affecting their brain. For example, if a veteran of war comes back home with PTSD, they may visit a therapist. However, if the therapist has never experienced a war zone firsthand, they may not be able to fully grasp the severity of the situation. By using virtual reality, they can see the horrors of war through their patient's eyes, 
all while safely at home or in their office without ever directly being in harm's way. The usage of virtual reality to put users in experiences they otherwise wouldn't be able to witness is why it's also used on paraplegic people. In order to allow them to experience aspects of the world that they can't due to their disability, doctors may implement a virtual reality treatment. It's also been noted to improve limb function in patients who underwent this kind of therapy. It's also helpful for those who suffer from more social-based issues. If someone has social anxiety and often has panic attacks in social settings, doctors can use VR to monitor their breathing patterns and be able to understand when these attacks flare up. It's also been used to help those diagnosed with autism to navigate through different social scenarios in a safe, comfortable setting. For autistic children, their parents may use virtual reality to see the world through their eyes and get a better sense of what their child is going through so they can be more accommodating to their needs. Needless to say, virtual reality does a lot more for society than bringing us some fun video games. It's helping to save lives and bring a sense of joy back to those who aren't fully able to experience the world around them in a literal sense. So how exactly does virtual reality work? What about it makes what we see feel so real as opposed to things like movies and TV shows that we know are obviously fake when taking them in? Well, the first thing, as we discussed previously, is the usage of panoramics. Panoramics give the user's image a 360 view, so in a sense, we can't ever stop looking at it. If you look up, down, left, right, wherever you will still see that computer-generated world, as opposed to a traditional video game where you can turn your head and immediately remove yourself from the immersion. But that's not all that goes into virtual reality that makes it so lifelike. Virtual reality takes advantage of the human body's natural senses, manipulating them so we truly feel, in our brains, that this imaginary world in front of us is real. Headphones drown out the world around us and make our auditory processes only take in what's happening in the virtual reality world. That combined with the headset is huge for the human brain. You take away your sight and sound and replace it with a computer generation. What do you have left of the physical world around you? Not to mention that trackers will turn your every move into that of your avatars. You move your hand, so will your avatar. You take a step, so does he. It's all meant to further remove you from your surroundings and help immerse you into this fictional world. And with headsets that come with built-in microphones, you can speak directly to others you see in the virtual world, making it not all that much different than the physical one. You can see, hear, talk to, and even touch other people's avatars and the surroundings you see. In a sense, virtual reality is just as real as the world we live in. Don't let that freak you out. If you ever get overstimulated, you can simply remove your headset and return to your regular life. And that's exactly what separates virtual reality from things like augmented reality. What's augmented reality? Augmented reality is where virtual objects interact with our real world. For example, if you ever played the hit game Pokemon Go, you'd know that augmented reality is used all the time. With the use of your phone camera, you'll be able to see a virtual Pokemon appear in front of you, wherever you are. The main difference between VR and AR is that the virtual component in AR is confined strictly to your screen. AR has digital creations that enter our real world, whereas in VR, we are the ones entering the digital world. The difference between AR and VR can be confusing sometimes, so just keep that in mind when thinking about it. So, now that we know a little bit about virtual reality, its history and its modern-day uses, what does the future hold for it? Well, there are some technical issues that many VR developers are working to have fixed as soon as possible, clipping being one of them. If you've ever experienced virtual reality, you'll be familiar with this. Clipping is when an object in the virtual world can be walked through, touched through, etc., when it should be completely solid. You can't walk through doors in real life, so there's no reason you should be able to in virtual reality either. Many users of virtual reality games often complain of physical symptoms, like dizziness or motion sickness when using their devices. This is often brought on by delay in the trackers we use when entering VR worlds. If your brain believes your arm is moving at a certain speed and it doesn't, it can cause you to feel out of sorts. This can be fixed by developing more sensitive trackers that are able to fully capture the user's every movement. There is also hope to create virtual headsets in 8K, with processors that are much more powerful than the current headsets on the market. 
This would make the graphics much more lifelike and the virtual reality experience that much more immersive. There is also talk of implementing AI or artificial intelligence into VR games that would create even more unique experiences for those playing them. Tech companies all over are planning out their futures around virtual reality. As we discussed earlier, Meta has created a virtual workspace that could make physical offices obsolete. Currently, Microsoft is working on Microsoft Mesh, a software that would allow cross-platform usage of VR devices. If I were wearing an Oculus and you were wearing the HoloLens glasses, we would still be able to meet each other in the same virtual server. Even Apple is coming out with their very own virtual reality device known as the Apple AR VR headset, which is rumored to be released soon, so be sure to keep your eye out for it.